Primary health networks, or PHNs, are a key component of the Australian Government's commitment to integrated care and health care reform. PHNs are charged with the role of strengthening patient-centred primary health care to provide the right care at the right place at the right time. To do this, PHNs need to understand and assess the healthcare needs of their communities. They need to address service gaps, as well as support general practices in attaining the highest standards in safety as well as quality. Research and evidence of best practice is part of their remit. So how might it work on the ground? We talk with Mark Booth, Claire Jackson, Jason Trefowen and Leanne Wells to get their perspectives on how research can inform the work of the PHN. Well, clearly research is going to be absolutely crucial in terms of PHNs moving forward. Yeah. As you know, PHNs have got a big role in terms of looking at the whole spectrum from looking at the health needs of the population that they are looking after, looking at effective services, looking at how individuals move through the system, looking at, um, at the end of the day, I guess, how to improve outcomes for that population that they are looking at. So in terms of doing that, they will have a lot of their own knowledge, they will know their own providers, they will know the communities that they work with, but they need new ideas to also come in from other parts of the country, mm. from overseas. Um, wh what, what is the best evidence about what really makes a difference for a primary health organisation working at that level? Whether we have the label research written all over our activities or not, uh, I think that the issue around collecting evidence analysing what we do, taking that, uh, learning from it and improving the delivery of health care within a geographical area is critical. Research is critical to the work of the PHNs. I mean if you think about their role, they're commissioning organisations, they're going to be managing a lot of money. Um, they need to know that they're directing that money to the right services, the right set of needs. So research mm -hmm. um, done in their communities, using so they've got information about the profile of their communities yes, so. about what interventions work about what interventions are showing promise what innovations are showing promise um, it's really you know critical fodder for PHNs and I'd include in that too I think a key thing we really need to remember from a consumer perspective is it's not just about the numbers in research it's about the patient experience so mm. and it's about qualitative research first piece is around assessing need and that takes a lot of research skills and is a natural place for researchers to work in co-creation with other groups to identify in a scientific and valid way where the real needs are in community for GAP services. Then the next quadrant we have is around co-design where we sit down and work as a primary health network with our community. NGOs, with our health and hospital sector, with universities. And you think about their commissioning cycle, it's, it's research and data and information right around that whole cycle from needs assessment, from thinking and planning what they're going to do. And that includes things that they're going to actually disinvest in as well as invest in. How do they do so that well yes, and from what, what an informed don't we base? Keep doing. Yes, um, and informing their evaluation and monitoring around that. That's where data and research is fundamental, the right, right the way around that wheel. Mm. Um, and it's also important to their accountability too. I think we've probably all got a responsibility in terms of doing this. I think PHNs have got a responsibility in terms of ensuring that they make their linkages at the local level with local universities, researchers, um, evidence producers at that kind of level. So they're tapping yeah, in at that level. They're tapping yes. at that level. We've got a responsibility at the national level for ensuring that there's an environment where research um, and PHNs can come together and that we encourage PHNs to actually look at latest innovations, latest um, development and ensuring that they're given a mandate, I guess, to come up with innovation. The real exciting part for 31 primary health networks to leverage off each other's experiences, we want to ensure that if there is someone from another PHN region who's doing something fantastic, for instance in the Hunter, yes. uh, we want to take on from what they've learnt 
and what that's been evaluated and translated into our environment. And I've got no doubt that there'll be some opportunities that we'll be pursuing over the next two to three years that we would think will inform um, other parts of Australia and let's hope internationally as well. Everything's changing in health, uh, in edu education, disruptive we technology. We have a very fluid there. platform, I we, think. Um, I think we've got to change as researchers too. There's mm. so much of research, uh, the, the approach to funding, the approach to delivery that is, has been around for 30 years. I think we've got to look much more proactively at where the big questions are. Yes. We need to have a much more mature relationship with the stakeholders that require our services. Because there, there are high expectations riding on PHNs. They are going to have to be accountable for the decisions they make. They'll be making decisions that some people won't find popular. Yes. So if they've got good data, good research, good evidence to fall back on, it really helps with that as well. No matter what the role of PHNs will, is today and will be into the future, our role is a relationship broker working humbly across the region, across a diverse range of stakeholders and fostering development and in this case our research capacity. And at the end of the day we want, uh, we want PHNs to be putting in place initiatives and developments that we know work, that are based on evidence and we know improve outcomes for individuals and really at the end of the day that's, that's having the research evidence behind them to enable them to do that. Thank you.